Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. We are going to do TBR Clue for May. TBR Clue is my personal way of picking books for my TBR every single month. I use prompts on each room and every room I assign two cards that I don't know about. And then I have to read a book for each room in order to reveal those cards. And at the end of the month, I have to guess who done it in those little special envelope, whether it be Professor Plum with the wrench in the study, or whether it be Colonel Mustard in the library with the rope. You never know and you have to guess. But in order to guess that correctly, you have to figure out what prompts revealed which cards. So I have to read nine books every month to reveal all of the cards. Now this month was a little sticky because I had to DNF a book, which was, wasn't the worst thing in the world, but did make it a little hard to get back in my reading mojo because it kind of slumped a little. So we'll get to that slumpy book when we work our way around, but first room we always work through is the hall, and that room was Mrs. Peacock's prompt, and we had to find a book, something related to Mrs. Peacock, and I chose Journey to the Center of the Earth. This was my original book, and I chose it because there is a pterodactyl on the cover. Of course, the cards will be here revealing what was shown by reading this book. I read this one, so we're going to go on to the lounge next. The Lounge was an in real life recommendation, so I chose Year of Wonder by Geraldine Brooks. I have yet to read this, or yet to finish this I mean, but I am really close and I am buddy reading this with Janelle from Too Fond of Books. We are going to be finishing it this weekend, so I have no doubts that I will be finishing this one out very soon. I'm filming this on Saturday, so I have no worries about finishing out Year of Wonder. Um, yes, yeah, so the cards are here. Dining Room was a diverse recommendation, so I chose Rich People Problem by Kevin Kwan. I did finish the series, so that's good for me. I struggle with that. Um, so yay, finished this one, and I will have a series review coming shortly for the whole series of Crazy Rich Asians. In the kitchen, we had Mr. Body, and so this one, I just gave a murder victim to this plot point or to this prompt. So I chose Murder Mesopotamia by Agatha Christie. I buddy read this one with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures and Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia. Um, it was good, but I did read it, so it counts. For the ballroom, I had to read a used book. So I read Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Uh, I did finish it today. Uh, it was quite the accomplishment, so I'm very thankful I finished it. The next one was The Conservatory, which was my hard, slumpy book. I had chosen The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. I was trying to read it and I just did not want to pick it up anymore. I was really struggling with this one for some reason. It wasn't awful. I'll talk about it in my wrap up. Uh, but basically I switched it out for The Case of the Missing Marquise by Nancy Springer. I have it on Audible and I got it from an, as an ebook from my library. I'm almost done it, like 20 pages left when I decided to film. So I'm excited. These videos take a while to film and I have the house to myself for a couple hours, so I figured let me jump on it and I'll finish the book after. The Billiards Room was my most recent haul and I had hauled Emily Dickinson's letters. So this one I finished, it was for my Fierce Women's Book Club and I finished it today as well. So today was a great day to film my TBR. The library was Professor Plum, but I had their Born Supremacy, which I've switched out for The Forgotten Daughter by Bo Joanna Goodman. And honestly, I <laughs> there's nothing in that book about forgetting, but the title counts as I have always attributed Professor Plum with being forgetful. So it works in my head, um, even though the title has nothing to do with forgetting. So it worked. Then the last one was the la uh, study, not the lounge, the study, and that was a reread. Now, if you remember from last one, I was supposed to read Vanity Fair, and I did this to myself where I tried and it was a much bigger undertaking than I thought. So I am kind of doing an analysis, which is like a giant homework project on it, which is much harder when you're reading a 750 page book. So reread, I am doing differently. Um, I have reread Logan Likes Marianne by A. M. Mar Anne M. Martin. I also reread Journey to the Center of the Earth as a graphic novel. Let's get into who done it this month. So my official guess is Miss Scarlet in the billiards room with the candlestick. So let's figure out if I got it right. So this first one is the billiards room. 
The second one is the candlestick. And the third one is Miss Scarlet. No punishment, great. I know that this game isn't as high risk as some other TBR games, but I did that so I can have more fun. And honestly, this month was pretty high risk if I hadn't found uh, Enola Holmes book because of the N author's name. So I had to switch that one out and maybe we'll come across a month where I have to genuinely guess at who is in this envelope, but we'll see how high risk it gets in the future. I'm enjoying keeping it fun with my switching out books currently. As we start in the hall, this is the first time we've pulled Mr. Green. Uh, he is someone who I've always attributed with wealth and money power. He's been very greedy at all times in my memory of reading about him from the Clue books I read growing up. He's also someone who has always been kind of on that like corrupt the system and just trying to sneaky, like be very sneaky and get by. Uh, but I would attribute something like that with him, except for the fact that this month is the 1900 to 1950s readathon happening all through May, hosted by Katie from Books and Things. Now, because of this, I am trying to fit in a lot of 1900 to 1950s classics. So, bear with me. I am going to be reading Anne of Green Gables. I cannot resist. First of all, green is in the title. Secondly, this cover is completely green. I love these editions. They are just beautiful. Um, and they are just gorgeous on the inside too. And this one isn't as gorgeous as some of them are. But Anne of Green Gables. So one of the prompts for that readathon is to read one that is set in your country. And Anne of Green Gables is Canadian and I am Canadian. So I'll be reading Anne of Green Gables this month. I have been wanting to reread the series for a while. Anne of Green Gables is about a young orphan who is just wanting a home and Martha, Martha, Matthew and Marilla are wanting a boy to come help them at their farm and so they reach out to an orphanage and they get Anne instead and it's a beautiful journey of a family, found family, adoption and it's beautiful. I can't wait to reread this book again. Um, so excited to read Anne of Green Gables. So in the lounge, we got a A to Z, which is a letter in the title. And I got the letter W, which I, at first I was like, why? <laughs> why did I have to get the letter W? Doesn't make sense. Um, so confusing. But then I realized I was planning on buddy reading this giant tome anyways. And apparently everyone else in my bookish world was reading Wives and Daughters anyways. So it's like the stars aligned and wanted me to read Wives and Daughters. Uh, Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell is a reread for me. I read it like two, three years ago and it is a hefty one. This one is a smaller version. It's like the size of my hand. It's a pocket book size, which is a joke because like this could fit in your pocket is a joke. Um, but this one is about Molly Gibson who is growing up with her father. Her mother passed away when she was really young and it's about her father remarrying and then her getting a sister and them just growing as a family. It's a wonderful character driven story and it has plot and development and it is beautiful. I can't wait to reread it. It's been, like I said, a few years, so I am excited to jump back in. This is gonna be literally the month of like me reliving all my favorite books. dining room we got subscription box. Now I could have been brave and picked 1984 for the uh, 19 to 1950 readathon but I chickened out because I don't think I'm ready for that book yet. I literally just opened the box and I don't think I'm ready for the dystopian. I might try it 
Um, let me know if you want to buddy read it because then that might help me build up the courage. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm really chickened out. However, I picked up the other book that was in that subscription box, which is The Body Politic by John or Jean Jacques Rousseau. This is the book that inspired the French Revolution because something that is surrounding the French Revolution will be discussed future in the future in my channel. So it will be fun. Um, I'm excited to read this for future context. It is really short and it's one of those little black penguin classics. I have no idea how it's going to go, but like I said, it's really short. So I'm excited for that kind of small book comparison with a bigger chunkier one like this one. In the kitchen, we got net galley arc, which I'm not excited about because that means I have to dive back into NetGalley, figure out what books I need to review still, and to my shame, look at what I have left. Um, thankfully, the list is not overly long, but still long enough where I'm not happy with it. However, I do actually own a physical copy of one of those books, so that's a nice perk. Um, and that is At Love's Command by Karen Whitmore. This one is a cowboy Christian romance, which honestly will be a nice change of pace. Um, I don't know anything about this. I know I like Karen Whitmore's writing. Her quick, fast-paced romance is something I can easily read, get sucked into. I don't know why I haven't picked this up yet. I probably put it on my shelves and then walked away and didn't look at my shelf again. So I need to pick it up. So I'm kind of glad actually that NetGalley came up because this pushed me to get into it. Otherwise, I would be reading The Forgotten Home Child, which is really sad, and I don't think I can mentally handle how sad that book is right now. So my next book will be a classic for the ballroom, and this one will be my Agatha Christie book of the month. This one will also count for the 1900 to 1950 readathon. I don't remember which decade this one is in, but this one will be a Tommy and Tuppence. I am buddy reading this with Janelle from Too Fond of Books. I think this one is an espionage. I don't know too much about it. I don't own it yet, apparently. I thought I did, but I need to go pick up a copy. I just know it's apparently a really good Tommy and Tuppence one. I have read two Tommy and Tuppence and both of them were not so great. Um, or did I only read one and it wasn't so great, but I am hoping this one's a much better experience because I've heard really good things about N or M. So looking forward to that. So for the conservatory, we have a diverse recommendation. I think I'm going to change up this prompt labeling because I just don't think it quite works for what I'm looking for. I just want a diverse book to be labeled on that prompt. Although I do look for diverse books in general. So that's just how it goes. Anyways, um, for this one in particular, I'll be reading My Grandfather Would Have Shot Me. This is by Jennifer Teague. I have been recommended this by my library. This one in particular is about a woman who was looking through her ancestry and discovered that her grandfather was a Nazi. And it's about her discovery of that. Um, and how obviously if her grandfather knew his family line, she would have been shot by him. Uh, I don't know anything else. I just know I have it off my library now and just the premise of it sounds very intriguing. It's nonfiction and I would like to get to it very soon. So I'm putting it on the TBR. So for the billiards room, I have no idea what we're getting because it's a TBR jar pull. Um, so this one is all the books I bought or hopefully all the books I bought in 2020. I don't think I did a really good job at keeping track of them, but here we go. So let's see what I pull. We will go with this one. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. I will do my best to read this. This is going to be a good one. I hope, I don't know when it was written, so I don't know if it applies to the 1900 to 1950s, although I think it's a bit older than that one, so we'll see. Yeah, so this one was published much earlier in 1852, so it will not apply to that readathon. Um, it is a little more on the chunky side. It's like 500 pages, so I will try my best to get through it if I am still in my slump, which I feel like I might be. That is not a reflection of the book. However, I will probably pull a new book um, from the jar. 
I will do my best to get through this one though. Um, cause hard topics are difficult when you're going through a slump. However, I don't know much about this. The back says the startling raw tale of a man and a boy sold into slavery and the hardships they face as one was the one was one of the first to address the subject of slavery and what it truly meant. So I am interested to read this because it is one of the first and I think it's very important to read this kind of novels. So this is now on the TBR. Honestly, this month has so many classics. I'm like, oh goodness. <laughs> I didn't realize how many classics I was reading this month. I do love my classics though. So it's not like a massive hardship, but I like my contemporary too. Anyways, the next room is the library. And that one is a historical fiction. So I managed to promise that this book would be on my TBR and I'm fitting it in because I'm determined to. And that will be Home Before Dark by Riley Sagar. This one, I'm calling historical fiction in a way. So this one is about 50% in the past, it's 50% in the present time, as this woman has inherited a house from her father, but it's haunted. And so the timeline in the past is from her father's novel that he wrote when they were living there and there was spooky stuff going on. Um, it's very creepy. I am just a total scaredy cat and I need to finish this book. I am about halfway through and I just need to like buckle down and get it done. So this will be my official book for Buzzwordathon this month and I am excited to get it done. So the last room we have is the study and this one is Professor Plum again. He's making another appearance. And for this one, I chose to go with another favorite and another classic, um, which is just, it's funny. Um, I went with The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Um, this one, I'm going with the Professor Plum because Professor Plum is a professor and in the Phantom of the Opera, Christine is learning music from Eric, who is the Phantom, and essentially he's her professor of music. I'm going with it. Uh, it's really short, but it's also was really good. I really enjoyed it when I read it like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, and I want to revisit it. It was haunting and spooky, but it was also my first kind of tipping of the toes into paranormal. And which I really enjoyed. So I want to go back into it again. And I feel like this would be great. I know that it's published or was published in 1909, I think. So it's also one for the 1900 to 1950 readathon. Um, I'm trying to fit as many books into there as possible. And this one's set in France or it was from France. So it's another one of those books that works. I have, I think, three books for sure from that time period. And I'm very happy with those at the very least. I might be reading another Agatha Christie um, with Kevy, so I'm excited with that one. Then I also have two book club books, which I need to mention, so I'll go grab them. So the first book club book that I have is Little Fortress by Lashana Rosno. This one is a local BC author, and I don't know much else about it. I know it's about women, and my book club leader, my librarian, picked it, so We'll be reading that one. I'm on hold for it. Um, yeah, I'll be reading it soon. I'm hoping it's much better than Forgotten Daughter as it was for the same book club and I did not really enjoy Forgotten Daughter. And then my other book club book is Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Bali Kaur Jaswell. This one I've heard really great things about. Um, I've heard it's quite, um, Quite an interesting book where it's like funny but also heavy but also has quite the erotic stories in it so i'm glad i'm physically reading it and not listening to it um it's not that long but i am reading with my book club and my book club we can turn the most innocent book into a very interesting discussion so i am intrigued to have our discussion about this book whenever that happens i'm sure it'll be a fun time so that will be my last official book for the tbr month although i guess this could fit into diverse recommendation i really do want to get to my grandfather would have shot me so 
those are it. I have a couple other library books out, but this is my determined set TBR. Uh, aside from Uncle Tom's Cabin, which I will really try to read, I just don't know if I can handle how heavy it is right now. And mental health is so important to me when it comes to reading, but mostly just like surviving with migraines. So I might be pulling another one out of the jar and we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know my mid-month wrap up if I need to pull a new one out at that point. If you could like this video if you enjoyed it, that would be awesome. And if you are new here and you would like to subscribe, please do. I will link the playlist for my entire TBR clue in the cards and in down below in the description. And I will link everyone who I talked about in the description down below as well, along with the readathon information there too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye for now.